Good morning. We are together here today on on our Zoom call with our beautiful ladies. We have Joyce Morley with us from Britain and Aneta Zabo, who is presently living in Oman. Is that correct, Aneta? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and Joyce, can you tell us some of the mission fields you've been on? England, uh, with the Bible Speaks, um, Montreal, under Pastor DeMeo, um, and then uh, Northern England, Chester, France. We were there for three years under Pastor DeMeo, and then now we're here in our lovely city, Lockdown, London. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and Annette, where have you been? in turkey and here that's okay that's beautiful well you're younger Wonderful. you're quite a bit younger than we are well we just want to start this morning with some prayer father we just ask you to cover this time we love you we praise you we glorify your name we are here because of you we just love you and thank you god for giving us the body of christ for giving us beautiful pastors who are such servants of to you, Lord, and their beautiful wives and these beautiful ladies who are servants, God, to you personally. And we ask, Father, that you would just bless this time together as we delve into this beautiful um, scripture and principle that we faint not. And so, God, just bless this time together in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, who else do we have joining us? Hi. Is that Bev? Beverly. We can't hear you, Bev. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Bev. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. It's so great to be together. So great to be together. Here comes Jane Hewlett. Uh oh. Hi, Jane. <laughs> it's not Jane just no, yet. It's not Jane. It's her. <laughs> oh, it's her better half. <laughs> there she is. Hey, Jane. How are you? Okay. Well, I don't know if we can hear you yet. Can't hear Jane. She has to unmute herself. Can you unmute yourself, Jane? So we're just praying and asking yeah. God to just bless this time together and and to just give us the most beautiful time of fellowship with these beautiful ladies. And it's like a coffee time sitting around a table as if we were all together. But amazingly, we are all in different places. So we're in Baltimore. Joyce is in England. Annette is in Oman. Beverly Speedy's in Cyprus. And, Ju and um, uh, Janie is in Albania. Amazing. Uh, Janie, I still can't quite hear you. Um, there okay. we go. Okay, now we can hear you. I... Nope, that's perfect. Right. We can hear you now. Okay. Good. So I'm just going to share quickly just what I've read in this yeah. word. Um, and it's the Amplified Bible. Um, oh, okay. Uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 15, but to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil of blindness is over their hearts. But whenever a person turns in repentance and faith to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and we all with unveiled face, thank God for the mercy of God that has taken that veil away. So we all with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Therefore, therefore, since we have this ministry, just as we received mercy from God, we do not get discouraged nor lose our motivation. We faint not. So just looking at your beautiful lives, 
and so grateful for each of you. Um, we have Pirio here who has been such a servant of God and we're so thankful for her life, continually serving God and with such joy. And she's been through some devastating trials and she has fainted not. And could we just start Pirio with you quickly that you could just give us a quick testimony of how God has been faithful to you in your life and how he has given you the ability to faint not in this, this life that we live. Wow, that's a question. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> God's ability to give us uh, that we faint not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's just so like personal to us, and he is uh, like it's just you know the big change that happened in our lives that we are we have the holy spirit inside of us and that we are in the body of christ mm -hmm. and that we have the word of god mm -hmm. and we have a spiritual covering and we have the teaching so that builds us our inner person that is then equipped to face the trials and go through this life like like covered mm -hmm. like we are like my life that i'm dead mm. my life is hit with Christ in mm. God so what rescues me in every situation is God mm. God's word his faithfulness his spirit his body that's right isn't it Boy, yeah the right? gospel yeah <laughs> he's our keeping power he keeps us it's a miracle Joyce uh, how do we remain faithful now how many years have you been serving the Lord probably 40 years or more I think I don't count. <laughs> we just celebrated our 39th uh, wedding anniversary uh -huh. wow. Sunday. Wow. And all those years we've been on the mission field. I was a single missionary for four years before, um, no, actually two years before um, I married Tony. Mm -hmm. So come to the mission field, you find romance. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so, but it, it's great. I think the key is like you can't live off of your past experiences, but as his mercies are new every morning, uh, we, then we could say great is his faithfulness because, you know, the strength we learned from yesterday, God has got different appointments in our lives so that we know him in our weakness, that he gets all the glory and honor and praise. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Um, also, so Bev Speedy in Cyprus, incredible life that you've lived with your husband serving God. You know, all of us are so filled with joy and inexpressible gratefulness for the fullness that God has given us in the body of Christ and the hope that we have before us. Beverly, with, with your life and having the big picture of what we believe in our future and the glory to come, what motivates you on a daily basis to stay quickened and to to literally have this the glory of God keeping you from fainting not? What are some of your... Yeah, I think one of my favorite verses is the joy of the Lord is our strength. Wow. You know? Yeah. And uh, every day we get up and we're like, we wouldn't swap this life for anything. Mm. But it's the life of God. Yeah. That... that flows in and through our lives you know we see we see people touched and turned and like Joyce and probably all of you we're not in countries where it's that easy yeah people people can be very hardened you know mm -hmm. and uh, we've been spending a lot of time um, in prayer you know that God would dig up the heart, the ground yeah. in people's hearts, because right. without him, we can do nothing, you Amen. know, prayer, the word and the body, you know, and just, mm -hmm. I think what really keeps us is like that early morning, just getting up, praying together, mm -hmm. reading the word together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel like we've lived a day with God already wow. before the day begins. Right. We have another day with him. Right. You know, just really relying and uh, depending on him all the time. 
-hmm. not on ourselves, not becoming independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing life we have. It's, it's rich. An, it is an amazing <laughs> life we live. It is so oh. rich. Period. you had some comments from people that you had asked the question. Can you state the question and then the answers that people gave? I thought of uh, uh, European lady missionaries. I mean, Annette is one who is serving. So we have two French ladies who have served decades together in Africa wow. as pastor's wives mm -hmm. and called as uh, like pioneering missions mm -hmm. with the past uh, husbands having a calling to be church planters. Mm -hmm. So Julie Arman, like she's been in, the, uh, in Africa and before that she was in Hungary. Mm -hmm. So uh, 13 years and Christine Timofte, who's mm -hmm. now in Zimbabwe, has mm -hmm. been in, in uh, Africa for uh, 10 years. So I'm going to read first Christine. So she was first in Togo and now in Zimbabwe and has two children. What was the question you asked? What sustains you on the mission field? I, didn't, I never said that no. question. <laughs> what sustains you uh, in life in, on the mission field? Like we could say, like for everybody, what yeah. sustains yes. you? Right. So, so she, she said, um, Chris, Christine said, Christine Timofte, married to Daniel Timofte. When I was a teenager, I was reading missionary biographies and biography, biographies, and I was fascinated by them. It was that kind of life that I wanted to live, mm. and that desire has not changed. And this is how she sustained. I just need God to live day by day practically. Yeah. Beautiful. And I am so thankful to have the privilege to live this kind of life. Wow. I just need God. <laughs> Remarkable, isn't it? Don't we all have the same heart? We all have the same heart. It's a, it's just amazing. Aneta, what do you what do you have to say about how God uh like in your life um when you got saved or you made a decision that I'm going to commit my entire life to God and that I want to be a missionary and serve him with all of my heart. Um, what was the decision you made? Do you have a, do you remember a certain point in your life you made a specific decision of commitment? Well, I think I carried it for so long in my heart. It was getting <laughs> stronger and stronger. And I think, it started when I was a kid, and and I listened to all the stories of uh, Hudson Taylor and all. And then, um, so I carried it true in high school and even university. Mm -hmm. At some point, I wanted to quit the university and just go. Mm -hmm. But then I prayed and I finished, and um, and then I spent one year home. But obviously, our life, in a sense, was the same. In a sense, it wasn't, but it was the same home too. So I really had good time in my university with my friends and so many opportunities there. And But then obviously a day came and I knew that like, it's time to go. Like yeah. it was just so strong. Like I felt like if I want to stay, I should not open this book again. <laughs> because whenever I open it, 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 like I felt like, okay, it's time to go. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So it's always been an impressed Thing on your heart to go to go on the mm -hmm. mission field to share the gospel with the world wow the glory of god it's so real um jane jane hewitt you are such a hero and we're so grateful that you're there persevering in a, I, I would say a difficult country but can you tell us something about the people there and how maybe the people that you are ministering to how they sustain your vision can you talk about the um, people there a little bit? Well, the people are, they, they actually love us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were in Bulgaria first, mm -hmm. and they did not love us. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and um, so, uh, and that's interesting because I was not sustained wow. there in Bulgaria because mm. the atmosphere wow. just hate, you know, you walk out wow. the door and the atmosphere wow. just hated you. Wow. Just hated you. Wow. So when we 
walked into Albania, mm. we were like, oh my gosh, wow. it was like daytime. It was like, you know, God lives here, oh, <laughs> you know? <incredible. clears throat> and, um, and they loved Americans and they loved foreigners. And, and so, yeah, so their hearts for us, really, um, God just did that for me and did that for us because mm. it was, um, it, it was sustaining, Wow! you know, it went beyond maintaining mm -hmm. <laughs> into sustaining wow. and, and, uh, edifying. Was, and when we, when we, we moved in February to Albania and then we went to Eurocon, mm -hmm. um, in March and it was like, a, it was like a, a wedding ceremony. It was like, it was a great big celebration of, of our hearts, of our souls to be, to be with the people in Albania. Wow. It was amazing. Oh, so they went with you to the conference. They, the Albanians always went to the conference. Wow. They, they've been going to the Eurocon. Like, like, why didn't we meet them <laughs> years before? <laughs> um, but it's kind of like that at Eurocon. We realize. Yes, like, it's true. We go so often and we don't know and we don't get to know people. Right. It's, it was pretty amazing. Anyway. Yeah. So when Pastor David Bouquet was in Albania, he would take them to Eurocon um, every year since like, I don't know, two, year 2000 or 1999 or something. So wow. they'd always been going. Wow, incredible. And, the, and then when we arrived, they showed us how to get there from Albania. You know, they had, <laughs> they had all the drivers down. They had all the, you know, yeah. schedules down. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Interesting. They, sustained, they really moved going. They sustained us. The, wow. the body, there was a little group of people there. And they really helped it in the healing process. Oh, beautiful. Really? They ministered to you. And, um, oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They wow. really did. Wow. And then the Albanian people are just so sweet. Wow. Yeah. They're kind of a mix between the Italians and the Greeks. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, yeah. how can you lose? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So grateful for that report. Isn't that beautiful? You have... Uh, you Pirio spoke with someone else and asked the same question. And who was that too? Well, I'll just uh, mention about Julie Arman, mm. 13 years in Africa uh -huh. with three children, yes. husband. So she mentioned uh, several things. One is having a solid godly friend. Uh -huh. and, Ma and Lisa Sliva is on the mission field now. And then having a weekly schedule mm -hmm. that is sustaining. And then uh, having doing like special things and having like one day, like a family day and, and uh, away from everything that mm -hmm. refreshes her. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, like doing fun things with kids. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then she says, what has sustained me all these years is God's faithfulness in finances also. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that they're thankful that there's a church behind them, spiritually supporting them and financially supporting them, mm -hmm. that God has come through their needs. Mm -hmm. And then also she mentions um, uh, the grace of God. Mm. You know, the God, God keeps us. Wow. Yeah. What richness we have. Isn't it true? We really do. We really have such incredible richness. So Joyce Morley, um, we just just love you so much, and we're so thankful for you. And I know it's probably not so easy to not see your friends and to not get together with all of this happening in the world the way it is. But the glory of God is so rich, and our our vision of this life and what we sacrifice. How do you uh, tell us about your your heart? in regards to glorifying God, like in, in the word where it says we go from glory to glory, but it says the Lord is a spirit. We experience true freedom and we all with an unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And we are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. This is so sustaining to us, isn't it? And Joyce, just just can you elaborate a little more on that idea of 
the glory of God that is set before us and, and how worth this life is. Well, I just, um, because I don't want to talk too much, but my heart is really, really overflowing on what the Lord has been doing in my life because um, in all actuality, because I'm thinking of the extended audience, perhaps there are housewives with lots of children Mm. and thinking, well, I can do local outreach, but you know, the atmosphere against them maybe think I'm not a missionary, I have all these obstacles which makes me weak or maybe I don't feel fruitful or you know there could be some ill people Mm -hmm. or uh I just wanted to share just briefly that um I'm in a tremendous wonderful place of weakness and um and it's it's God ordained because and I can say one thing that is has been the anchor of my soul is the greatest mission field on earth is our hearts Mm -hmm. and when we lose the perspective that you know he loves us so much and everything is allowed in our lives so he can change us speak to us he loves to hear our voice and um uh yes so It's like we glory in our weakness that the power of Christ rests upon us. Mm -hmm. And I've just learned to take that um, in this season, that glorying can be like, I'm really excited, although my flesh, David said, my heart and my flesh, they fail me, but God is the strength of my life. He is my portion, Mm -hmm. you know, forevermore. And uh, I started losing about 10 pounds of weight during the the first lockdown this summer and I had a bad back and I was thinking oh that's that's strange you know I'm already slim so 10 pounds on me is is a lot Mm. and um I already had I thought oh I'm I'm do this you know check up anyway just to test your cholesterol and everything well thank god I had it because then they found that I had abnormal liver enzymes Mm. so because we have this huge lockdown where for five and a half months, no diagnostic testing, no x-rays, no, you could get a blood test, but it had to be under special doctor's orders, everything. You you only went into the hospital if you got, you know, heart attack or stabbed or something like Mm. that. The hospitals were closed. So God just allowed just me like um, really, I mean, in some ways, you know, in America, people say it's medical malpractice, but God allowed he allowed it. And um, I learned to just discern the strangers' voices that can either keep us getting progressively weak in our spirits, or we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. Amen. And honestly, I could just tell you story after story where obviously they were re- testing me for cancer, and usually that would take two weeks. And if you have multiple tests, within a month, you'd be told where your cancer was. And I just said, Lord, if I have cancer, it's okay. Um, But we always had a vision. My husband and I, we're going to get raptured at the same time. Our hands are on the plow till he comes. Mm -hmm. And I just knew, like, especially if you ladies um, don't have big teams. And we have a team, but everyone works full time. So really, it's you know, my husband and I um, that are full time right now, but you can identify, you know, if God removed you, that would really put a bit more pressure on your husband. Right. So I didn't even tell my husband for about five months that they were testing me for cancer. Oh my goodness. And some people may say, that's crazy. Isn't your husband your best friend? And he was, he is my best friend, but when you love someone so much and you know that they would have fear in their eyes when they look at you, trusting God, I just wanted to keep that between me and God. So I was getting progressively weaker and things were so slow. I had to do my own management plan. I had to like get the strength of God to fight, to find out what's wrong with me. And I just, you know, I asked two people to pray for me, two pastor's wives that have been in the trenches for decades and decades. Contacted Susan uh, Silva and dear Ramona. And I just said, just pray I hear from God and that I would do what he wants me to do. So 
Um, and then I asked God, then it, like those prayers and me meeting with God and the Lord, you know, he said to me three things. And this can speak to anyone, whether you have financial weakness, your weakness, like you're, you feel totally impotent, how to minister in your family that may be hard or whatever, you fill in the blank. But um, the Lord said to me in a very firm way, your liver doesn't belong to you. And I'm like, wow, it's the first time God spoke to me without scripture. And I said, like, what's the scripture? And because I always don't, you know, and um, uh, you just gave me an impression about Romans 12, 1. And, and then the second thing he said to me, you walk by faith and not by sight. And then the third thing he said, the sickness is not unto death, but to reveal the glory of God. Wow. And those three things is what kept me. It took them nine months um, to, to figure it out. This is with MRI scans getting lost. Wow. And this is not British. I mean, British medicine is very good. Mm -hmm. It's because of the mayhem that God's allowed in this nation, the shaking of the nations. Um, and yes, I could have gone absolutely, I'm a human being. And plus I'm a, you know, I'm a newly retired medical professional. I do things right. I'm very proactive. And here I am a, a victim of the lockdown in one way, but I wasn't because like the Lord again, like just rebuked me and said, fear not, wow. oh Jacob. But now it's like, but now fear not. And then he said, I have formed you, Israel, and I have called you by your name. You are mine. Mm. And I think that's so important in missions. We belong to him. Mm. Uh, we follow the lamb wherever he goes. And uh, so it's it's still ongoing. I mean, I've lost now 15 pounds, but God is just giving me people, you know, in my liver biopsy, um, I said, you took something from me, but here's here's hope beyond coronavirus tracked. And I'm like witnessing to so many medical professionals and a God is just giving me, like what Bev said, the joy of the Lord in my weakness. And, you know, he has, and he's led me divine appointments where I'm ministering to a nominal Jewish lady now. And uh, she's an expert in um, natural paths. She's trained by liver specialist. And, um, and that's another story God provide, God paid, God told someone to pay for this and they didn't even know what was going on really with me. Yeah. But all I could say is, and she was saying, envision yourself getting healed. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to argue with you. My God, I'd rather have the health of his countenance on me and know God through this and not put the timing of my healing in a box. Mm. And, um, but I, I, I am expecting, you know, uh, God to do great things. But, you know, in the seasons where you're saying, God, I just want you to be glorified. And I'm just thinking, even right now, me sharing this testimony, and I won't, I don't want to take anyone else's time up, but that um, the time I remember when the MRI scan was lost and no one could care less about, you know, uh, anything. And I just persevered and I said, Lord, how can I glorify you through this? And he's even using today mm. and, and, and just thank you. And, mm. and when the, the, the consultant said to me, I saw her for the first time Friday, she shook her head and she said, you should have seen me six months ago. And it's like so much in mission, so much in your life in America, wherever country, the things that um, there's deterrence that are demonic in our lives. But when we wait upon the Lord, we don't faint. We can be honest and God, I feel, I feel like fainting, but I believe in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living through mm -hmm. the body of Christ recovering through the words he speaks to us. And so after she said, she said, you should have come and see me. And it was just like, just Revelations 3, I came in my mind. And, and, and it's when the Lord says, I know you have a little strength, but mm. I've given you an open door. Mm. And there's open doors on the mission field. Yes, Bible studies, planning new churches. But I think the biggest open door is, is communing with Jesus, who is the door. Mm. Um, 
and he knows we have a little strength and we're to glory in that we're right. just to glory that he he gets all the glory and honor and praise wow um beautiful as he invests in our mission field and then we invest in others through yeah. that yeah wow that's really revealing his so glory through our through our weakness that's such a great example of how god's god's revealed glory comes through our weakness um i think we may have lost joyce i'm not sure oh there she is beverly speedy um what can you tell us about joy on the mission field what makes you laugh what do you have for joy that <laughs> that makes you glorify god in front of people that they can see your joy what makes you laugh your husband make you laugh? <laughs> that's a strange question a strange everything question. <laughs> i don't know uh, i think laughter is good medicine and yeah okay. i think uh just knowing god yeah knowing god personally knowing knowing sins forgiven mm. knowing eternal life the, the quality of life that we have um wow you know mm. that one song says how can we keep from singing his praise mm. you know yeah. Wow. And then the body of Christ is like so amazing and God just astounds you with this one and that one. Not to say that there aren't discouragements, but sure. We don't focus on those. Sure. And you know, God is like busy teaching us uh every day. Mm. All day, every day. Mm. Amen. And it's amazing, you know. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. Him. Yeah, really. Mm. I think um I don't know who said it but we we need a sense of humor on the uh on the mission field. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gosh. I remember my children used to make me laugh so hard in Germany when it was the most difficult dark gray skies, <laughs> yeah. long season of winter and just dark and my children yeah. would come home from school and make me laugh so hard and I think God just had <laughs> gave me very funny children. <laughs> <laughs> I really needed it there. Uh, gosh, Aneta, do you have any questions for Aneta? Uh, yes. So, ah, wow. <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> oh, yes, this uh, team life. Like, how does. Yeah, tell us something about team team life and the value of it in your life. Because you've been on several mission fields, and you were like from your youth, you were like fo followed the Lord. And one of your team members, uh, actually your roommate, she mentioned Marsha Malik. She mentioned that um, what keeps her is the glory of God, and that that she knows uh, she's accepted in the beloved. So, um, and that, you know, like God knows her frailties and weaknesses and her physical capacity and she's just available. So, so like team life, something about that. And, and the glory Aneta. of God. Yeah. That's Aneta. For Aneta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm amazed by it, obviously, because cause you realize that God has chosen the people, like he handpicked, um, and and we see it how it's like, <laughs> it's really him placing people, so that's just beautiful for me to see always, yeah, and, uh, and uh, what you said from Ju Julie that, um, uh, a friend, like for example, for me in, with, in this uh, case, with like living in Marsha, I'm so always so encouraged by her faith mm -hmm. and uh, also others. So it's just so, such an encouragement for all of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can be weak and, uh, and then there's a faith atmosphere in the team and that's so beautiful. Wow. Team life is rich in that way. It can be tricky, but it also can be so encouraging. I mean, it has to be encouraging. You're building a church in a foreign country and reaching the lost 
And that's what God's glory really ultimately it's about reaching the lost and bringing people into the fold. And so you want to build a team that is a place of rest for people to come to where they can mm -hmm. come in and experience the fullness of the body of Christ on, on a, a, even a small team. It's still where the glory of God resides. It's where he lives. And Jane, um, there in, Al in Albania, just um, uh, any last thoughts for us today? We have a few minutes left. Um, we um, really appreciate you all coming to be with us um, on this Zoom meeting. Uh, but Jane, can you tell us anything that has touched your heart? during this time on the Zoom meeting with these other ladies? Um, someone mentioned um, the keeping power of God. Mm. And it seems like, you know, God has, well, I mean, the words, you know, faint, Paul wants us to faint not. You know, he says, faint not. It's like, it's like God telling Joshua, have courage, don't fear, don't be afraid. It's like, why do we, why do we have those words? It's because we are afraid. It's because we need encouragement because we are discouraged. It's because um, we do faint, you know? And, and I really, um, in Bulgaria, it was, it was a, it was a fainting time and, and it was always, it was always, as um, we've been saying, is that the word of God has always um, quickened us, mm -hmm. right? He's always quickened me. It's like in the Psalm, Psalm 119, um, you know, my soul cleaves to the dust, you know, but, and, and, but quicken me, God, according to thy word. Wow. And so mm -hmm. I think, all right, so what does your word say about this? All right, so well, Philippians 4, 8, think on what's true. What's true about this? Mm -hmm. Truth is God has kept me and is keeping me in his, the palm of his hand, in his, the pupil of his eye and in his, in his the, you know, in his heart. Mm -hmm. He has me and, and that helps us not to faint, wow. you know, and, and yeah. it's, and when I was going through something else in, in Albania, I was, um, our church had just, you know, gone through a split and it was at Eurocon and, and I was able to speak with Joyce oh. and she just built me up, Wow, you know, so it is, it's the body of Christ and it's these, it's these conventions and boy, we miss them, but this is great. Zoom is good. <laughs> um, but, uh, we, um, the body of Christ, you know, one faith, one doctrine, one spirit, one father, one, mm -hmm. and we're unity mm -hmm. um, of one spirit, you know, so we can build each other up and, and hold each other up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow. So I just, I want to mention that I'm not in Albania at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in Serbia. Wow. Oh. And we are, we were able to meet Pastor Tomas oh. and um, a guy from his church, a man from his church, and Carolyn Peters here at a town in the south of Serbia wow. called no Novi Pazar. And it's a Muslim um, city. Mm -hmm. and, um, and to see Carolyn is like, you know, it, and that's what this convention, that's what conventions were all about, wow. you know, meeting each other and, and we were able to meet each other and we're on, a, we're going to go and be with them for Eurocon. Wow. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah. you'll head up to see the rest of the team. I yes. have a testimony, yeah. so short, 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 uh, a couple of weeks ago, I have a Serbian friend and, uh, we led it to the Lord over lunch. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. There's some encouragement for you. Wow. That's great. Well, you know, the things that we do in the mission field, we, we, we pay a price. We, we lay our lives down for the glory of the Lord to be revealed. We give up many things. We sacrifice maybe being with family and friends 
we sacrifice. And then down the road, when we were in Ukraine, we gave our lives to God and, and it was the hardest year of my life. And then several years later, we were at Eurocon in Budapest and there stood around me maybe 15 Ukrainians that were solid pillars of the church. And I could have wept and wept and wept that the fruit of that time that was so hard for me remains to this day. It was tw- almost 30 years ago. And these now former teenagers are now adults in their 40s with their own children who are now teenagers. And I could weep over and over again at that hardest year of my life being so fruitful that God was glorified. We laid our lives down. We sacrificed. We went. And God blessed so abundantly. And it's our story, isn't it? It's the story of our lives. It's an eternal principle, the glory of God being added, glory to glory to glory as we walk each day glorifying God and giving him the glory for the things we lay down and he's glorified in it. It's just such a miracle. So we want to thank you all for being on the Zoom meeting. We're so grateful for you and for Perio. Thank you for finding some other ladies to join with us and giving their comments and We just want to give you all the glory, Father. We just thank you for each one, Lord Jesus, where Joyce is, Father, her healing, Father, her blessing, Lord, for Annetta, for Beverly, for Jane, Lord Jesus, just bless, 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 Father, abundantly, above and beyond all we could ask or think. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Joyce, family. Mm. <laughs> Good to see you. Give me a hug. Hug, hug. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. <laughs>